Haverhill Journal, and welcome to the newly opened Bradford Rail Trail. I have Danielle Smida, the chairperson of the Rail Trail Committee, here with me. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and we are going to talk a little bit about how this all happened. Danielle, less than 10 years ago, people will remember this was an abandoned rail bed strewn with trash and just not the most sightly place. And look at it now, it's gorgeous. So tell us a little bit about how this all happened. Well, you're right, it was a decade in the making. It was the community, it was the community's vision 10 years ago to have a whole loop go around the river, and today it's a possibility. I mean, it took a, a lot of dedication, hard work from our committee, from our city, from our legislators, and here we are. Tell us a little bit about the process of creating a rail trail like this. Well, so the committee was formed in 2009. I think I was one of the first members. Uh, the joke of my family is that I was pregnant with my seven and a half year old son. He was born <laughs> in 2010, so it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. Eight years ago, we had a cleanup. We were pulling out rolls of carpeting, uh, yeah. abandoned furniture, television sets, and today, look at it. We worked to be able to have people use the trail so they could start to visualize it. Early on, we had an organization called Iron Horse come in and they pulled the track up uh, in exchange for the iron, which okay. was great. And it wow. gave people, we put down a T base and was able to, uh, people were able to see the, see the trail, start to use it. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your expansion plans. At the grand opening, there was some talk of the rail trail going all the way down to Crescent Yacht Club which would be really cool. Crescent Yacht Club and beyond. Um, we have a grant in right now with the city of Groveland to um, come up with plans to build a bridge. There are two bridges that we need to continue through Groveland, which would tie into Georgetown and eventually tie into the borders of Boston Trail. We did buy the next parcel, so we do have that property, and the city will soon start clearing, clear cutting that so that we'll be able to access the, the parking lot, the Crescent Yacht Club, and the Washington Playground. The rail trail begins here at the corner of Middlesex and Main Streets. But did you know that the trail is also adorned with a series of gorgeous sculptures like the one here behind me? Three of the sculptors met with us to tell us about their inspiration. The supportive eye beam is representational of the understructure of the buildings in the city. The spiraling helix is representational of a railroad track and the helix of the DNA of mankind, those responsible for building railroads and cities. Hi, I'm Susan Neeland, uh, the owner and instructor of Neeland Studio of Fine Arts in Plaster, New Hampshire. When the call for artists came to my mailbox, uh, my in-mail, um, I opened it up and instantly thought I know exactly what I want to do. The dangling chimes, which are not on this, but they're going to be railroad spikes, to represent the advancement of humankind through culture, as well as reminding and representing the forcefulness of railroad spikes, likened to the tethering of humanity to a city. And I thought, well, I'm going to work this up and I'm going to submit it. And so I filled all that out and sent it out. And my thought when I did it was, how am I going to build it? I got in contact with Steve Palmer, who was the instructor of the Metal Fabrication Department at Woody Regional Botech, and we started going back and forth with possibilities. How could it be built, and what materials, and it was nice to be taught by Steve. I know a little bit more about alloys. He talked about different metals, and which ones age well, and which ones will beautify with age, and which ones will break down too soon to be used. How I felt personally when I got accepted, I was um, shocked because I didn't expect it. You know, you just figure it's a competition. So every time I win something, I just am always surprised. The thing that I most thought you know, on a personal aspect is I have two children and five grandchildren. And I thought to myself, years and, and generations from now, when I am no longer here, my great, 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 great grandchildren should be able to go over and say, my grandmother created this. This was my grandmother's concept. Hi, my name's Dale Rogers. I'm a metal sculptor from Haverhill, Mass. The components that you're looking at now all go to a sculpture that's going to be on the Haverhill Rail Trail. The piece that we designed is about 12 feet tall, and it's trying to give a representation of Haverhill's history, also the railroad, and the waterfront. 
we all thought those were key components in building this sculpture. This large gear here has the Haverhill logo, or the big H that we've all come familiar with. It's one of the pieces that I like just because it is so simple. We have the Bradford Bridges, and we have a nice sturgeon down here in the background. For a long time, we've wanted the sturges to come back, and we do feel that this is a great representation because the sturgeons are coming back up to the river now. And when you're looking from the northern bridge in Haverhill and look down onto the uh, lower bridge or the Bradford Bridge, this is actually what it looks like, and we're real happy with the way that came out. This long piece that you're looking at here with all the little dots is a fabricated railroad ribbon. Railroad ribbon is what we can consider a railroad track. But we're making this, and these components are all going to be welded to this piece. The thing that excites me most about this sculpture is that it's helping to revitalize the downtown waterfront area and that goes in conjunction with the whole Haverhill Rail Trail. We think the Rail Trail is going to bring a lot of um, new people down to the riverfront, get people outside and exercising, which we feel is really important. Hi, my name's Jack Welch. I'm a local sculptor. This piece is titled Two Sisters Two. It's uh, loosely based on a ship built in 1818 in Haverhill. The pieces on the trail were to be supposed to do with transportation, so I chose shipbuilding. This is basically half scale of the ship that was built uh, originally, so it's roughly 11 feet across. The other one was 22 feet across, and I think it was 90 feet long, two-masted schooner. I was introduced to the river at a young age through my dad, had a little boat on the river, and we used to take it out the mouths into the ocean. I dedicated the piece to my dad, and if you look over here, I put his initials on the base right down here, Joseph Redmond Welch. This is uh, my studio here in Bradford on Laurel Avenue. This is where the work happens, or the finished part of the work happens. This was the model for the piece on the river. So basically it's uh, just made out of wood and cardboard. When I started the rail trail piece, I did so much work on the uh, investigation and the history and blah, blah, blah. I did so much work on it. So once that piece went into production, I felt like I wanted to make a few more of them because I wasn't done with the concept. Anyway, so I made a goal to make six ship pieces, this being uh, the second one. Uh, but this is all mahogany, it'll all be oiled, so it's in the works. I had known about the rail trail, and um, I really like the way the city's going. I like the beautification of the city. How nice to have a trail that we could utilize. I mean, that's lost space. And then to make a choice to add culture and art and say more about the city of Haverhill, that it cares about culture. It just brings the city up into another echelon. But we care about bringing culture in and fostering culture. So to have sculptures along it, I think, was a really novel idea. There's been a lot of people that's worked really hard on getting this rail trail. They actually took the time to go the extra mile and put artwork along it. So we're hoping it's going to generate new creativity in Haverhill and new ways of looking at Haverhill as more than just a place to live, but a place to enjoy. Everyone should get down here and just take a stroll. You can park on either end, walk the distance, come back. Um, it will loop around from bridge to bridge uh, with the new boardwalk. It's just a perfect setup to get out of the house. And uh, having sculptures on the trail was, was a fantastic idea. So Danielle, the community really wants to be involved with this rail trail. So what can we do, people like me, to help? Oh, just continue to use it. The best thing that we can do is have people using the space. I know it makes everybody who's been involved in the project so happy to come down and see people um, 
enjoying the space, using the space, telling people about the space, um, and taking care of it. If you see trash, picking it up. If you see something happening on the trail that shouldn't be happening on the trail, letting somebody know about it. Um, really treating this like it is your asset, because it is the community's asset. Very good. All right, so taking care of the property and doing what we want to do to make this a better rail trail. That's right. Thank you so much, Danielle. Thank you, Lindsay. Beautiful. You did a great job. Well, we made it here to the end of the Bradford Rail Trail, and it is stunning. But you've been listening to me talk about it long enough. You guys have got to get down here and see a side of the Merrimack River that you've never seen before. For the Haverhill Journal, I'm Lindsay Paris, and we'll see you next time.